I really like this episode with Elaine because if you can get the subtleties in terms of mixed messaging when you first meet a man, you are going to do yourself a real favor. So listen closely, take notes, go back, listen again to this episode with Elaine. I'm so thankful for your advice. I love how intelligent and eloquent you are and still have love and given me some great guidance and direction. And now it's up to me to execute it. I feel a lot better just working through it. I thank you so, so much. I feel like you already are instilling more confidence in me that this is possible. Sick of sacrificing or settling in your romantic life? Welcome to Make Him Wonder with Coach Paula Grooms where women struggling in real relationships ask the expert. Unscripted, unfiltered, understandable coaching conversations to help passionate women succeed in love. Hi there, and welcome to Make Him Wonder. I'm your host, Coach Paula, a dating and relationship coach, licensed social worker, and author of the book, Why Won't He Commit? How a Man Decides to Make You the One. My guest today is 41-year-old Elaine, who recently started dating again and is feeling anxious about it. Elaine met 39-year-old Lee and feels she made some mistakes possibly landing her in the just-for-fun girl category. I helped Elaine in the past, so she wanted to talk to me today to see what she can do to have Leo see her as wife-mother material. She also has questions about how to navigate initial dating situations and conversations about long-term commitment without scaring a man away. Welcome, Elaine. Hi, Paula. It's so nice to talk to you again. Yes, it's great to reconnect. Lovely to hear that you've met someone that obviously from this intro that you crafted with my assistant here, that you like and that you'd like to be in wife mother material with that's correct i'm actually talking to two guys at the same at the time like we literally just met um one of them i've been talking to for about five weeks just talking and we've been on one date and then another guy which is the one that i'm referring to for advice is the one that i'm really connecting with and we started talking about three weeks ago when you say talking what do you actually mean so we communicate, text, he calls on video call mostly to check in with me, and I call him back sometimes on video call. It started off on a really high note, the way we met. We met organically, and then it tailored off a little bit. Then I pulled back a little bit. Then I started getting anxious and reached out to him, and then things kind of leveled off, and I noticed as soon as I started you know, pulling back, he started showing interest again, and he's coming to my city where I'm living at the moment. He lives five hours away. I met him in his city on a different note. I was there for my girlfriend's. Um, she had a birthday party, and I met him there by chance, and here we are today. He actually just called like 10 minutes ago on video mm. call. Okay. So him being five hours away is why you've only seen each other once? Yes. And did you meet him at this party with your girlfriend? No. (laughs) No, no, I did not meet him at this party. Um, I met him at a hookah lounge, which was not planned. So the party, can I share the story of how we met? Of course. Please do. Okay. So this was Thanksgiving weekend. This was Black Friday. My girlfriend had already sent the, inv- the invite over to me back in September and said she really wants you to attend this party. I hadn't seen her for about almost a year. And I was like, okay, I got to go. Five hours away, it's where I attended uh, university for graduate school, and that's where me and my girlfriend met. So she's the only person that still lives in that city and one other guy who's just a platonic friend. And when I say platonic, I really do mean platonic. He was a friend of a guy that I dated before, like four years ago. So as I'm getting into the city about an hour out, I call him up. His job is the kind of job where he travels a lot. So you never know if he's in this city. Let's just say city A. So I said, hey, are you, are you in town? He's like, yeah, I'm in town. I was like, oh, because you're always traveling. 
He was like, yeah, I'm in town this weekend. What's up? I was like, well, I'm here for the weekend for such and such's birthday party. And I just wanted to know if you're in town. You know, I haven't been back for a whole year. This is where we went to school. I'm just touching base with people who are in town. He was like, sure, just come on. I said, okay, I'll let you know after the party. My friend, she's married. Um, she has three kids. So we don't hang out the way we used to back in college. She's a full-time mom. She's a doctoral student. And I was like, you know what? The party is done. It was a kid's birthday party, her daughter's birthday party. And that she was in for the night. But I wanted to go out. You know, I'm in my old city. I wanted to go out, see new places, whatever, and just meet up with whoever was available. So my friend, my acquaintance, I'll call him. Let's say his name is Tony. I said, hey, the party's done. What are you doing tonight? It's Friday night. What's there to do? Is it the same, you know, like back in the day when we were in college? He was like, it's pretty much the same, but there's this new spot in town, and you can come over there and meet me. So I just want to predicate that there's no, it's strictly platonic, that me and this guy. We don't even talk. Like, we just, like, probably, hit, you know, connect with each other on Facebook if we see each other. But he was a friend of a friend I dated. So I, I get there, like, 8.30, to this new spot. It's a hookah lounge. You have to be 21 and over, but mostly graduate students hang out there. He also did graduate studies. He did his master's degree. So it's an older population. So you probably see students around 25 to 30, probably mid-30s, that type of atmosphere. So I get there, and I hug him. I was like, man, I I haven't seen you. It's been at least two years. He's like, I know. We embrace, you know, a platonic hug. And he says, well, I want you to meet some of my friends. So he goes around the table and he introduces me to all of his friends. And one of his friends catches my eye. I'm like, oh, this guy is cute. When, when Tony introduced me to his friends, all of them shook my hand and said, nice to meet you, Elaine. This particular guy, he hugged me from the side. I said, oh, you're a hugger. Nice. Nice to meet you. And we start talking and we introduce ourselves. And the rest of the night, it was just me and Leo talking, okay? Where we're talking facing each other, like there's a table separating us. Tony, my friend, gets up and goes to the bar or whatever he's doing. So Leo comes and sits next to me, starts asking me like, where am I from? He's never seen me before. If I'm around here, if I'm around here. And I said, well, I went to school here. And he's like, I went to school there, but I didn't see you there. Then we try to figure out when we went to the same school. It turns out he graduated two years before me. So I was like, I guess we just missed each other. He says, um, so I understand that you have your doctoral degree. Because my friend had, when he introduced me, he said, hi, Leo, this is Elaine. Elaine, this is Leo. Does he, do you know she has a doctoral degree? I was like, you didn't have to tell him that, okay? So we start talking, and he, he says, um, so what do you do? I said, well, you know, I just got back to the country, and I'm really looking for a full-time job. But to answer your question, I teach Spanish online. So he goes, really, you speak Spanish? I was like, yeah, I lived in Spain. We're just getting to know each other. He tells me where he's from and everything. He's not from the U.S. And he said he went to school to get his master's degree. He went back to school to get a second master's degree because the first master's degree wasn't working out the way he wanted it to financially. And then he said, like, do you like what you do? I was like, I do like what I do, but sometimes I wonder if there's more that I can do. So then he says, I think you, you can do a lot more. You have a Ph.D. Have you considered working in tech field? I said, I have, but I don't have tech skills. So he begins to tell me that, you know, a lot of people think that you have to have this, this brain to do tech field. He said there are non-tech skills that you can do. I was like, really? What, can you tell me what you mean? He's like, sure. Project management, different things in tech industry, but not really tech stuff. And he said, I do it all the time. I do short courses all the time. Sometimes they're six weeks, they're nine weeks, they're 12 weeks, they're six months. You go, it's self-paced. You sign up for it. You do the certification and, you know, you get into the tech industry and it's more lucrative. And I said, so how has it been working for you? He said he loves it. You know, he went to school to get his master's in petroleum engineering. That wasn't working out for him. He was just exhausted, went back to school and got, became a data analyst. And he said, you can do it. I was like, I don't want to go back to school. I'm tired. He's like, just do a short course. He pulls up his phone and he says, look, these are all the short courses I've done. I'm going to give you my login information. At some point, you go in there, you look at the courses, choose one that you think you like, and I can suggest some to you. I was like, okay, at the end of the night, we can do that. We get up, we start dancing, nothing really intimate. I was like, this guy is pretty cool. So not only did we have a great conversation, but I'm attracted to him physically, and I could look at him and see he works out. At one point, he asked if I work out. I said, yeah. He said, I can tell, because he saw my gym membership on my key ring. And I said, yeah, I do work out. I love working out. It's like very therapeutic for me. We start talking. 
it's getting kind of late because I left my friend's birthday party to go straight to meet Tony. And I said, you know, it's getting kind of late. It was really nice meeting you. I guess I'll see you sometime. That's exactly what I said. I go up to Tony. I said, hey, man, it was great seeing you. I'll be in town for the weekend, but I'll be pretty busy trying to catch up with other people and meeting my professors, my old professors, and I'll probably leave early Monday morning to head back to where I now live, five hours away. So as I'm leaving, he says, hey, um, we should exchange numbers. I was like, okay. So he takes my phone and he begins to like put his number in. I was like, just give me the phone. I just said it like, I was like, give me the phone. I'll just do it. I'll do it. <laughs> right. So he said, text me when you get home. Okay. So this is about 1 a.m. I get home. I take off my clothes because I've, I've been driving the whole day. So I'm still dressed. I take off my clothes and I'm like, do I text him? Do I not? I'm trying to remember everything from the podcast that I listen to because I take a lot of notes from your 8020 Wonder Club, which has been really helpful to me. And I'm like, do I text him? If I text him at 1 a.m., he might think, gosh, she really texts me at 1 a.m. Like, is this a sign that she's that girl? I was like, but it's kind of sweet that he wanted to know if I'm home. But then Tony didn't ask if I was home, but Tony was kind of drunk anyway. I'm, I'm just going through my head. So I was like, okay, just send a damn text. I send a text. I said, hey, Great meeting you. Just wanted to let you know I'm home safe. I didn't see the response from him. Normally, it's, if you know anything about WhatsApp, you'll see two checks to see that the person read it. I was like, dang it. You should not have sent that text. So now I'm pissed at myself. I go to sleep. I wake up Saturday morning, and I see that he did respond. Probably when he woke up, I guess. It was probably 6 o'clock in the morning. He's like, great meeting you too, Gil. Great meeting you too, Elaine. Um, thank you. What are you doing for today? I said, actually, I'm heading to the gym. He's like, you're traveling and you, you actually going to the gym? I was like, yeah, that's how much it means to me because I missed yesterday, Friday, because it was Black Friday. I drove here, so I'm going to go up to the gym. He's like, that's pretty cool. So I go to the gym. After the gym, I go and do some leftover Black Friday shopping. He checks in, hey, how are you doing? I was like, I'm fine. I'm just here trying to get some shopping done. But I'm not really paying attention to him because it's the day after Black Friday. At around 8.30, he's like, what are you doing tonight? I was like, do you believe I'm still at the mall? He's like, you kidding? I was like, no, I'm still here. And I said, I'm going to call it a night when I'm done and take a nap and wake up tomorrow, Sunday, and see where Sunday takes me. Why don't you come over to the hookah lounge? I was like, you know, I'm really, really, really tired. I'm hungry. I'm frustrated. There's only one cashier here. I am not going anywhere. It was great meeting you, really. He was like, no, I really want to see you again. Like, I really would love to see you. I was like, okay, does that come with a meal? Because I'm really hungry. Like, I kid you not. He was like, come over. I'll order you something to eat, and we'll, we'll see where the night takes us, pretty much. So I get there. This, at this point, I'm really tired, but I'm, 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 I'm excited about the food because where I'm staying, you know, I'm staying at a friend's house who, who doesn't really cook. I start eating and everything. He's like, how was your day? I was like, I had a really busy day, Leo. Thank you so much for ordering my meal. I'm just going to hang out here for a little bit, relax, because I need to relax, and we're going to head back home. The evening becomes really nice and light. I actually enjoyed it. We started dancing, but again, it was a lot of space between us. We're dancing and everything, and... At one point, he says, um, are you going to come home with me? I said, what? Um, before, when he invited me to the hookah lounge, let me go back a little bit. He did say, um, you want to come over and watch a movie? I'll order something for us to eat and drink. And then I ignored that completely. And I said, so he gave me two options, really. Either go to his place, watch a movie, he order something, or I meet him at the hookah lounge. I said, we'll meet at the hookah lounge. And I sent a smiley face. So we're at the hookah lounge. Now I'm back where we're at right now. And he says, um, are you going to come over to my place. So I, I said, what? He said, I'm inviting you over. I was like, is this what you normally do? He was like, no, I don't invite women into my place, but you, I, I like you. I was like, right, yeah. So he starts laughing, and he said, what's the problem? I said, what are we going to do, Leo? Are we going to go over to your house and pray and hold hands and sing Kumbaya? He starts laughing. He said, I mean, if you want to pray, we can definitely pray. Do you like praying? I was like, yeah, it's a part of my life. He's like, we can pray and I'll baptize you. We just, it's like he's flirting. I know what he's saying. He's suggesting sex. And I said, no, that's not something I'm interested in. I'm probably going to go to sleep and I'm going to go to church in the morning. So he goes, you go to church? I was like, yeah. I was like, why does that surprise you? He's like, you know, it's refreshing to hear someone who has a spiritual life. I said, yes, it's part of my life. So I said, thank you for a lovely evening. I'm going to head on home. As I'm leaving the door, he says, can I follow you home so that you're safe? I said, and of course I know, Paul, you're going to give me a feedback, and this is where I think the misstep occurred from this point going forward. 
I said, you know, I'm pretty fine. I know my way. He said, okay, how about me and Tony follow you? So we wrote Tony, and Tony says, guys, I, I would love to follow you home, but um, I got to wake up early in the morning. I got to wake up in about four hours. So he says, can I just follow you home? I said, okay. He follows me home to the place that I'm staying, and um, I said, thank you. So I'm driving my car. He's behind in his car, and then he winds down his window. He says, why don't you come over here on my side by the door? I said, okay, what's up? He was like, you know you could just spend the night at my place. I was like, but I'm home already. And then he goes, okay, Elaine, I get it. It sounds like you don't want to have sex. I said, that is actually correct. I'm not interested in having sex. I'm just getting to know you, and I don't trust you. I said it just like that. He said, wow, no one has ever told me that. I said, I'm sorry if you took it that way, but what I'm trying to say is I just met you. I don't feel comfortable spending the night with you. And I don't see why you should be comfortable spending the night with me because you don't know me. He says, I just kind of like, I see something genuine about you, Elaine. I was like, thank you. I get that a lot. So he says, you're going to go to church in the morning? I said, yes. He said, okay, here's what. He said, I go to church as well. And you can spend the night at my place. I'm going to tell you everything that happened because I I just need some clarity on this whole thing. You spend the night at my place. I won't touch you. I won't make any advances towards you. If for some reason I do, you delete my number. We never speak again. You know, you, 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 I, I never existed. Fair, and in the morning, we go to church together. So I thought about it. I'm like, hmm, maybe I should call Tony. But Tony gets up. He really does get up at 4 a.m. to work for 5 a.m. So he says, I promise. I know it sounds naive, so I said, okay, wait right here. I'll get my bag, and I'll come back. I get my bag, we drive to his place, he offers me the guest room, then he says, you know what, my room is more comfortable, you can sleep in my room, there's a lock on the door, I'll sleep in the guest room. So I change and everything, he gets me a towel and everything, and I lock the door and I go to sleep. I was in and out of sleep, really. I was like, did I really just do this? This is really crazy. I've never done this before. I wake up in the morning. So I wake up in the morning and he's in the guest room, kind of half asleep, and I knock on the door, I said, hey, are you up? He was like, yeah, I am. I said, I'm not feeling really well. Do you have anything hot that I can drink, like any kind of hot tea? He's like, sure, what's wrong? I said, I don't know, but the food you ordered last night, I'm not feeling really good. So he says, okay. He gets up immediately. He goes to the kitchen. He gets me a cup of tea, and he says, sit down on the sofa. He gets me the tea. He sits on another chair far from me, and... I was like, okay, so he, he is honoring his word. Even though I put myself in a very compromising situation, it really wasn't the best thing. Now I think, of, think about it. So I said, what time does church start? He says 9.30. At this point, it's about 7 o'clock in the morning. And I said, oh, we still have some time. He's like, yeah, we can just watch a movie. So he turns on Netflix. He's like, what do you want to watch? We watch something. And then he said, if you want, you know, you can come closer to me. I don't bite. I said, no, I'm good right over here. So he smiles. He said, you think I'm going to do something to you? I'm not going to do that. Like, I'm not from the U.S., I don't want to be deported. I said, yeah, but you're a man, which is kind of silly because I'm still at his place. So he says, you don't trust me, do you? I said, well, it takes a minute for me to get to know someone. I start feeling better, and he gets up. He he said, can I go into the room? I said, sure, go ahead. He said, I want to make sure you're comfortable. He goes in the room. He starts getting ready, and then he comes back out. He said, you know what? You're the woman. Women take longer. You go and get ready. I'll wait out here. When you're ready, you let me know. I do that. I come outside. Uh, We have a lot of time to spare. We're ready. We're watching Netflix. He comes over and he kisses me very lightly on the cheek. I was like, what was that for? He's like, nothing. I just just think you're pretty. You seem like a nice girl. I was like, okay. So let's just keep it there. We go to church. It was really nice. We sit next to each other with some distance between us. After it, he was like, how did you like it? I was like, it was really good. Thank you for inviting me. After church, we went to lunch. We had lunch. It was midday. Church got done at around 11. So we had lunch. And I start feeling tired, and I said, well, thank you so much for the invite to church. Thank you for lunch. I really need a nap. But I did say, and this is where another thing, another thing I think I may have gone wrong, I said, do you mind if I just take a nap at your place? Because where I'm staying, my room isn't that comfortable. He said, sure. So after lunch, we go to his place. I go in the guest room, and I lay down on the bed. And he comes and checks in, and he says, are you okay? I said, yes, I'm fine. I just, I'm just really tired, I guess, from the driving and everything. I really haven't rested fully. So then he sits down on the bed, and he says, can I kiss you? I said, um, okay. So we start kissing and everything. It was really good, and I stopped him. There was no sex. I stopped him, and he said, um, 
what are you afraid of? I said, I'm not afraid of anything, but this is a bit too fast for me, and I think we need to slow down. So um, if you don't mind, I just want to take a really good nap, about a half an hour nap, and then you can take me home when I'm done. So he says, okay. He walks out of the room, and he closes the door. I get up from my nap. He's watching the TV in the living room, and I said, I'm ready to go home. He takes me home. He says, nice to meet you. I said, it was great meeting you too. He said, safe drive back to wherever, where I am right now. So that's, that happened. That's the weekend in that city. The morning that I'm leaving, I text Tony. I said, hey, Tony, like I said, great seeing you. I'm heading back now. I guess I'll see you when I come back over. If I come back over, he said, safe drive. That same morning, Leo texts me and said, hey, I know you're leaving today. Safe drive back. How long is your drive? I said, five hours. He's like, okay. I get back. As soon as I get to my house, which is where I'm at now, he calls, like, perfect timing. And I said, hey, what's up? He was like, you said five hours, and I kind of gauged when you get back. So um, I just wanted to know if you're safe. I said, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm actually, I'm safe. I just got in. I'm in the garage. He's like, okay, cool. He's like, nice meeting you. I hope we catch up sometime. I was like, okay, cool. So we continue talking throughout the week and everything. He checks in. He asks, you know, what part, where do I live and what part of the town I area? Because he comes every once in a while. And he said he's going to be there this weekend. So now we caught up all the way to today. He said it casually. So just remember this is the this is Cyber Monday. He's like, I'm gonna be in I'm gonna be in your city in about a couple of weeks, on the fifteenth to the seventeenth. I was like, Oh, okay. I just left it at that. And you know why, Paula? Because he didn't say, Hey, I'm gonna be in your city, I would love to see you. He didn't say, Hey, I'm gonna be in your city, can we meet up? He just said, I'm gonna be in your city. But me, I should have probably asked more, but I didn't. Because I always think the guy should lead. So I was like, Okay. All right. Then he goes, did you, did you find a course yet? I said, yes, I did. So what happened next? So he asked whether or not I had thought, found any courses that he recommended. I did. And he shared his login information with me. And I signed in at the time. And I said, okay, I really appreciate this. I love reading. I love learning new things. So I'm going to actually try this course that he suggested. So I actually started that week. Every night I'd go and read for about 30 minutes. And then it was on my phone. I prefer studying on my laptop where I can actually take notes. So I was like, okay, maybe I can try to sign in on my laptop with the password, but I didn't have the password. So I reached out to him and I said, hey, Leo, so thank you so much for the information, but I really prefer to study stuff on my laptop. Do you mind sharing your login information with me again? He said, sure. So he calls me on video call and he says, how are you, by the way? I said, I'm fine. I'm doing really, really good. I'm really liking this, this information so far. I have a lot of time in my hand. How are you? He said, he's fine. He works from home. He just wanted to see my face. He was like, well, have a good day and I'll send that call over to you. So this was that week, at that week following Cyber Monday. He said, I'll send the call over to you. Maybe he forgot. So Wednesday came around, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and I'm like, okay, I really need this code, but I don't want to bother him at all. I don't want him to think, like, I just got into my head. So he finally called on Sunday, but I missed the call completely. I was doing something. So I saw the missed call, a missed video call. He always calls video. 90% of the time he calls video. So I called him back. I said, hey, what's up? He said, I just called to check in on you. I said, you called to check in on me. So I said, um, I'm a little bit disappointed. He said, why? I said, because last time we spoke, you said you're going to send me the information and you're going to call me back. And it's been a couple of days now, and that's okay. I just don't think it's cool when someone doesn't honor their word. And he's like, I'm so sorry. You know, when you called, I really was working. I got distracted. One thing led to another. I'm so sorry, but I'm going to send it to you right now. So I hang up the phone. He sends it to me and everything, and I... I log in and I re I continued with the course and everything. And then, so that was that week. The week after, he would probably text and say, hey, how are you? And I would say, I'm fine. That's it, you know. Or I would post something on my status, in my WhatsApp, and he would say, it's, it's mostly me working out. He was like, great workout. I was like, yeah, it was a great workout. Did you work out today? He was like, yeah. Very surface information. So I'm like, this doesn't feel good to me. I was hoping it would be more in-depth, you know. So that happened. I was like, you know what? Maybe it is what it is. He was just looking for sex. Maybe I'm not his type. Maybe I messed up. Maybe I, I let him on and he's upset. You know, maybe I had no business going to his apartment. These are all my thoughts. I really backed away. I backed all the way. Tony calls me and he says, hey, what's up with you and Leo? So I said, what do you mean? He's like, well, he's saying a lot of good things about you, but you guys aren't talking. I was like, that's interesting because I would say the same thing about him. And so he goes, 
you know, he's a data analyst. He has a lot of stuff going on. I was like, yeah, I know. It's just kind of weird to me, but I said, it's okay. You know, I'm glad I met him. It's okay. It would be nice to get to know him some more, but, you know, no hard feelings. So Tony was like, you know, he's a good guy, you know. I'll talk to him. I was like, you don't need to talk to him. It's okay. I really appreciate it. So that inv- that conversation ended, and Leo called. He calls on video call. He's like, hey, how are you? I was like, I'm good. I'm I'm good. It's Saturday. I'm heading out. You know, I have, to, I have some errands to do. I have to babysit today. I'm really good, but nice to hear from you again. And he goes, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, um, he said, I know you th- probably think I don't call, whatever. I was like, you know, you know, these things happen. And he's like, no, no, no. I just thought that you were busy. I said, I, I'm not working like that. I'm home. I'm home. I, I teach online. So if you want to call, it's okay. He's like, okay, okay, okay. I'll call you sometime. I'll call you tomorrow. Tomorrow never came. It was about three or four or five days again. I'm like, no, I'm too old for this. I really want something more serious. I can't do this. So I had issues with the the login again, the login information with my password. My cookies had issues. I was like, gosh, I hate the fact that I have to call him again. So I delayed a little bit. I was like, I don't want to call him. I don't want to call him. I'll just study on my phone. I'll just study on my phone. But it was annoying studying on my phone. So I reached out and I said, hey, quick question. Did you change your password? He said, nope. I said, I can't get in again. He's like, what do you mean you can't get in? He calls me a video call. He's like, let me see what you're doing. And we walked through it, still couldn't get in. He said, I'm sorry. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's your your computer because he logged out and he got back in. So I said, did you share your password with someone else? He's like, no, it's just you and me on this thing. I don't share my password with you. I told you I like you. I was like, thank you, but I can't get in. That happened. So that's week two. So now we're in the third week, which is this week. Tony calls me. He's like, hey, you know Leo is coming to your city. I was like, is he? He's like, yeah, didn't he tell you? I was like, he told me, but he didn't say it like, hey, he wanted to see me. He was like, he has, he's coming to my city. So I said, well, I wish him the best. He's like, he's been telling me a lot of good things about you. I'm like, okay. So I call Leo, which is a, probably another misstep. I said, hey, how are you? Um, Tony tells me you're coming to my city. And he goes, yeah, should we be there today? I was like, okay, so what brings you to my lovely city? He goes, I'm going there for my buddy's graduation. You know, he's always been in my corner, and we had the whole weekend planned. I was like, oh, okay, so you're going to be, like, when is the graduation? He said, Saturday, tomorrow. I was like, okay, so you're leaving when exactly? He's like, Friday, but he's on the road as I speak. This is where I think I did another misstep. I said, it will be nice to see you. So then he goes, you wait until now to tell me this? Like, it's a day before, which was last night. I was like, well, you told me you were coming, but you didn't actually say you, why you were coming, so I didn't want to intrude on your plans. It's a long weekend for him. His friends and his family are celebrating, and he promised his friend he's going to be there. I said, but the graduation is Saturday. He's like, I'll be back. I'll be back in about two weeks with Tony. We're coming down anyway. We're coming down for the weekend. I'll come with him. I was like, oh, okay, well, you know what? This has been great. And this is a video call. This was last night. So we switched the topic. We started talking about different things, about food. He was, he was cooking at the time because it was a video call. He had to go because the phone beeped in. If you know anything about WhatsApp, when a call comes in, you can no longer see each other. He said, Elaine, there's a call coming in. I'll talk to you sometime. So he ended the conversation. And I remember on one of your podcasts, I think you recommended that it's always better that the woman ends the conversation. I was like, okay, that's another mistake. Like, I'm conscious of these things. I really am. But when I like the person, for some reason, it all goes out the door. So I went to bed. I woke up this morning and I said, hey, hey, Leo, safe drive. Have a fabulous weekend. And congrats to your friend who's graduating. He doesn't respond. I was like, there you go again, Elaine. He called me about 15 minutes before I spoke to you for this phone call. Called me in a video call. He said, hey, what's up? I was like, I just, I'm here. I just came in. I start talking. He's like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm about to take a nap. It's rainy. It's wet. It's cold. He's like, oh, okay. I just called to say hi. I have like three hours left. I was like, okay, well, it was great talking to you. We'll, we'll talk sometime. And that was it. And here we are. Okay. Thank you for outlining really the entire relationship you've had thus far. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. So you outlined a few what you believe to be missteps. And I'm going to tell you that overall, it's not that there were these independent missteps, so to speak, but there is an overriding thing that's happening. And this might shock you, but 
what it is is that you are giving him, and I don't know if this is including other men at this time, but because I did speak with you before and know a previous story, it's fascinating to me that there is this friend involved again yeah. that is acting as a go-between, so to speak. Not much, but again, you just started. Yes. What do you make of that? <sighs> At some times, I'm a bit uncomfortable about it because I feel uncomfortable to some degree because I dated his old colleague slash friend who is no longer in the U.S., by the way. And he knows our history. At one point, Tony and my ex were living together because Tony needed a place to stay temporarily till he got his own place. So that was probably like four or five months. So he knows our history. So I'm like, okay, what are the chances of him talking to my ex and saying, hey, so, um, you know, Elaine was in town and it looks like, you know, my she, she, she's so an interest in a guy. I thought about that. And I also know that my ex, he and Tony aren't the best of friends, but they have one thing in common. They come from the same culture, the same country outside of the U.S. The other thought is I'm like, hmm, you know what? Me and my ex are no longer together. We're out of the picture. He recently tried to come into my life, actually. He still tries. Um, he's, he's no longer in the picture, but here's a situation where I genuinely like Leo, I really do. And I'm like, gosh, this is weird because I don't know what Tony is telling Leo or he's not telling Leo. And I don't know what perception Leo has of me. Okay. My feeling about that is that it doesn't matter necessarily what they are saying. The mixed messages came from you. And that may be hard to really wrap your mind around. And all I can say about it is that you're thinking that you made these individual missteps. Yes, there were a couple, but mostly the overall feeling for the man is not one of wonder, it's of confusion. Ouch, okay. Does that make sense when I say it? Yeah, yeah. So it'll be helpful for you to tell me, what do you think I mean when I say it's not wonder, it's confusion. Um, I was at his place. We were kissing. Usually that's an invitation for sex, but we did not have sex. So maybe he's like, well, this girl seems confused. Like, why did she come over to my place? And if, maybe she doesn't know what she wants, or maybe she's playing with me. Maybe she, she doesn't, I don't know, all sorts of things. And that's where I think my huge, my biggest misstep was actually going to his place even though I slept in a, we slept in separate rooms. Yes, you're on the right track. So you presented yourself most notably that first evening in the first category when we speak about Freud's Madonna Horror, correct? You yes. left him on a note of, you know, I'm deciding to leave, and then he asks for two exchange numbers. Yes. You do. And that's where you said you felt maybe texting him was a misstep when you got home. Yeah. I'm going to tell you that's pretty small in the scheme of missteps. He asked you to do that. And yes, better not to. Absolutely better not to. Whatever the man says and even if you don't catch yourself in the moment and you actually agree to it. This happens all the time where the man will say, text me when you get home. Sometimes you won't think about it and you'll just say, okay, but think about it when you get home and do not text him. Again, for you, Elaine, quite small because you sent a nice text. It's fine. It didn't hurt you in a big way, but it does make the man think, what? She remembered. So then that night, he wanted to see you. You were putting yourself in Madonna category. You were basically showing, I'll meet you out if there's a meal attached to it. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, I guess, neither here nor there. Uh, he did buy you dinner, 
you were with others? Yes. Okay. So it's not a date. It's a bit of a last minute thing. And I understand why you went, but I want to take it back for you to help you look at it in a bit of a different light. So say that night when he said, you know, just meet us out, you had said, oh, thank you that I'm not going to be able to do that tonight. Again, it was so lovely meeting you and thank you for giving me the password to the course. Okay. What would have happened next? <laughs> I'm already smiling. Um, he might have wondered, oh, okay, does she, maybe she doesn't like me. Does she like me or not? Um, that's what I'm thinking. Yes. And through that, you do two things. You see if he's interested by his pursuit and through the pursuit, he becomes more interested. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay, you go and you didn't help yourself. And this was a bit of a bigger misstep if you want to look at it in, in gradation. You want to show every man that you get it. And if you did allow him to drive behind you and make sure you get home, yes, you don't go to his place. Okay. Because that's a mixed message. And you even said it yourself. I realized I put myself in a compromising position. Yeah. Now you're lucky because he didn't take advantage of that then. That night he let you sleep in his room. He was gentlemanly about it. But we'd simply go back to my adage. What you do with him, he thinks you could do, would do, or are doing with all men. And that's an unfortunate. It's not the truth. It's almost never the truth. Right. But it's how men think about it and why we have to be so mindful and keep that adage in our mind. Because you showed him in steps that you were interested or you wouldn't have gone that night to the second hookah meet mm -hmm. you would not have gone to his home and then it goes from there that after church and lunch you don't make your exit and you go back to his place again and you allow i guess he came into the bedroom was he laying on the bed and you were kissing yes mm -hmm. So it's a mixed message. It's confusion. Now, you see, we would think, well, I kept everything really above board and there was no sex. How can that be confusing? It's confusing because it's not showing the man what you expect and it doesn't compute because the male brain of black or white, on or off, stop or go, yes or no, male or female, Madonna whore, but on a very low scale, meaning you're not all the way into second category. No, not at all. But you're also not all the way in first category. I can, I can accept that. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I called because I kind of felt it. Yeah. You will feel it. And there was nothing indicating that he's interested in more. Right. I came to that conclusion as well. Nothing. And so you have to show him, I've got your number, that you are interested in sex. Listen, he likes you. He likes everything about you. And of course he wants to have sex with you. Yeah. The most important thing is that you're clear about what you want. Yeah. And with the five-hour difference, which is not insignificant, and him not showing interest in more, you're likely going to have to do this in a hard, more black and white fashion to get to know if there would be potential or possibility. What are you thinking? I just think I messed up. I know I messed up. That's why I was so compelled to call. And I also know from experience and even through listening through the different podcasts, it's hard to get back where you want to be then. It's, it's hard. 
like it, it takes hard work. It takes intentionality. And I also think that I know this about me. I knew the minute that I stepped out of his house, I knew I went wrong. And I also knew that when I went back and took a nap, I also knew that I went wrong. Um, I felt it in my gut. I'm like, what, you know, what are you doing? And so much so that when he dropped me back at my place where I was staying, he's a hugger. He loves to hug. He just kind of Leaned over, like, you know, nice to meet you. There was nothing like, I would love to see you some more. Nothing of the sort. And in my experience, I do know that men know how to make things happen if they want to make it happen without any help from the female. So I thought, okay, it's a done deal. It's a really done deal. So I was quite surprised when, you know, the day I drove back and he called and said, I just wanted to make sure you got in safe. Yeah. I like him. I like everything about him. I don't know if there's any hope at all. I'm glad I did not have sex. I also would have been probably more hurt or confused. But I see where I definitely confused the heck out of him and even myself. And I'm going to tell you something that is going to be very, very confusing to you and probably to the listeners of this episode. I'm trying to think how I'm going to put it. It has to do with just what you're saying about being in a category and perhaps getting beyond it and going into the other. There is a possibility of turning things around. There is in, I would say, the majority of cases there is. And this is what is going to be very confusing about it in the devil is in the details. And before I go into that, I want you to be all ears. This is one that I'm very glad you are a member of the 8020 Club, Elaine, because you can listen back to this. And while it may not compute at the moment, I am certain in knowing you that it's going to do so down the road. And I hope it does for everyone. And we're going to get to exactly what I mean by this in a moment. I trust you're enjoying Make Him Wonder and that you're getting a lot of helpful information for the life of love you desire and deserve. So if you're not part of the 8020 Wonder Club yet, you need to be, because now Make Him Wonder is exclusive, a members-only club to listen to every episode, past, present, and future, in full, all ad-free. The 8020 Wonder Club is a Make Him Wonder membership that gives you all of seasons one, two, and three in a categorized list by age and relationship status, and a multimedia library of my content, including my book, relationship evals, and my Mechanics of Men Mindset Manual, a weekly action step you can focus on to attract and keep the man of your dreams and have him committing to you completely in the coming months. Make this the moment you start living as an 80-20 Wonder Woman, because love, like life, is best lived in 80-20. When you do 80% of what works with men, the 20% you don't won't much matter. Join the 80-20 Wonder Club by going to the 8020wonder.club. Don't miss out. Go now to the 8020wonder.club. You and your man will be glad you did. Okay, so we're getting down to the real brass tacks here. And like I said, this is going to be confusing because it's not the fact that you did or did not have sex then. It is, it's slightly the mixed message mixed with the attempt at controlling the situation and the attitude towards him of that he's not to be trusted. I'm really trying to process what you said. It's not the fact that I didn't have sex, but it's the attempt at controlling the situation. It's the slightly mixed message mixed with the fact that there's an attempt to control it because you don't trust him. Now, again, I have to immediately make the caveat because anyone listening closely would just say, but you just said earlier on, you have to show the man that you know what he's attempting to do by like following you home and that kind of thing. So here's the detail that's that's a very important 
distinction. And that is, yes, I'm a big girl. I know what's going on. And I'm going to make my choices, totally own them, and not attempt to control you through any of those choices. And not just through any of those choices, but in making them. So I'll give you a hypothetical that may help you make sense of what I'm attempting to say because it's extremely contextual. Okay, because I'm trying to process it. I'm not sure I get it. Yes, I understand that. So here goes. You meet him at the hookah lounge the first night and everything's going well. And he says, I like to exchange numbers. He gives you the course thing earlier and you do well by saying goodnight. He says, text me when you get home. We're going to go with what really happened. You did. So he may kind of be thinking, hmm, okay, this is a good sign. And then on Saturday, he texts you and you keep going back and forth. And then he wants to just meet up. Here's where the rubber meets the road. You say yes, if it's going to include a meal, which really doesn't matter because you said yes to the meetup. You go and right then he wants you to come home with him at the end of that night. Right. Okay. So we're going to go with the hypothetical here that to make a point, that we're going to go to the one end of the scale and then we're going to do it on the other end of the scale. So you get the context of what I mean. So on this end of the scale, you're going to say, I think that might be, might be fun. <laughs> okay. I would like that. And he's all a Twitter. Really? Yeah. I've had a really nice time these past two nights and yeah. So he's raring to go and you go home with him. And just for the case of this scenario, I'm going to say that you go home with him. He's galant. He makes you comfortable. You start making out. And lo and behold, by the time the sun is up, you've had sex. And then you go to church. And then you have brunch, lunch, and then, yes, you go to take a nap. And maybe you even have sex again. And there's no attempt to try to control anything. You're free, easy breezy, and you show mutual positive regard. You like him. You talk about everything that you talked about with the courses, with his work, the friends, anything and everything. And you say, I had a wonderful time. I'm going to be getting on the road. I think he would still check in with you. And he would absolutely be saying, I'm going to be visiting in a couple of weeks. And you did nothing differently, and you needed the password, he attempts to help, whatever. He's definitely going to want to come and see you again, because he wants to have sex. Mm -hmm. And you do. Mm -hmm. And as things continue to go along, because he feels at ease, not controlled, all of it, you see where it goes. And you do not protract it out at all. Like when he goes home, you feel that's kind of it. Oh. Because it's five hours. And then when he says in two weeks or three weeks or whatever, hey, I'm coming back. You can then perhaps because it's been all, you know, rainbows and roses or what have you, his interest is peaked. You say, you know, I'm going to be very honest with you. I kind of didn't expect this. He'd be like, expect what? Well, you know, when I accepted your invite that first night, I really didn't think there would be any chance for us to continue. And then of course you were coming just two weeks later and it was wonderful to see you and I really like you. But I am looking for something solid and leading towards a real relationship and the five hour difference I think would be quite an impediment. Uh -huh. Okay. And then you see what he says, because now he sees you as cool girl, not trying to control anything, not giving mixed messages, but just when the rubber meets the road, you state what it is and that it's really not going to work for you unless it's headed towards something. Mm, okay. I okay. get that. Yes, I do. Uh -huh. 
And then of course, the flip side of that scale is that when he asks to see you that night for the second hookah with the dinner, you don't go. And then you see if there's any real interest. Because by not going, you would have not gone home with him. You would have not shown your hand in terms of, I'm trying to control this, although I'm doing things that thinly veil my desire to be around you, to accept your invites, and give you mixed messages. Mm -hmm. There is nothing that hurts us more than the mixed messages. Mixed messages do not make men wonder. They're confusing as to what's going on and or what category is she really in, and it doesn't help us. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, I do feel some type of way that he is coming here and he didn't say, you know, I'm going to be here for the weekend until Sunday. Let's meet up. I do feel some way about it. I do. So that's where I knew. I'm like, okay, um, how do I get out of this? Do I just let it go, chalk it up as an learning experience, or how do I get out of this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You mentioned controlling. I'm not quite sure. Controlling, I think the word controlling is throwing me off a bit. Um, can you explain? what that means by attempting to control the situation by my hypothetical when he says i'd like you to come home with me that first night you say oh you do hmm that that might be fun i may just like that if i if i'm escorted something like that right in other words if i feel safe and not showing the mixed messages come with the lack of okay i'm gonna do this but then I'm going to trust you. It's either all in one way or not at all. That trying that middle of the road thing, it's, how do I explain it? Like, I guess because men are, men are black and white. Yes. It, there is a, a sense like I am trying to manipulate this to continue to be with you and have time, but I'm not trusting you. And for the man, it's like, well, if you don't trust me, why are you giving me this time in my home and you don't know me? Oh, oh, okay. Now that now that, now that it's been explained that way, I get it. Um, yeah, okay. Because I do like spending time with him. I, I like his company. I like his conversation. I love his humor. I enjoy his humor. But I'm like, if I don't trust you, well, I shouldn't be there in the first place. Not going to his home. And that just makes it feel like manipulation. What do you mean? Mm, it's a tease in a way. Oh, okay. You see... To tease him? Well, of course not. But the male brain is black and white. So it doesn't compute. If you don't trust me or trust yourself or you're not all in, what are you doing this for? You're being manipulative. You're being a tease. Okay. So it's better not to do that, to give the man a good feeling about you that you take 100% responsibility for everything that you do and that goes on with you emotionally. This makes a man not only wonder, but be in awe of you and that you're unlike other women. Oh, okay. (sighs) Okay, I got it. Which is quite odd to me. Maybe I just, I'm just getting back into this. So I don't know where I, because my, my last relationship, it's exactly the first situation that you presented where I met this guy. We connected immediately. Great conversation, great chemistry. I usually wait at least a month to six weeks, sometimes eight weeks before I get intimate with a guy. And my last relationship, the one who's no longer in the U.S., I just, felt so attracted to him. I was like, I'm going to sleep with this guy. 
And I'm just going to see where it goes. And it developed into a beautiful, blossoming relationship. It just ended because he had to fulfill some obligations back home. Now he's, you know, he comes in now and then, like, where are you, where are you right now? You know, I'm just going to get my visa sorted out. Wherever you are, I'm going to come and look for you. You know, he's getting back into my life now, but he always commends me and says, you are a great girlfriend. But I didn't go in with the intention of that. I just thought, I just want to have sex with this guy. But we also were in school together. So we studied a lot. We went to the cafeteria a lot and we developed. So I think in this situation, I was like, okay, maybe I could do things a little bit different and hold off on the sex, but still enjoy the man's company. You can, but not by giving the mixed messages. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now I got it. Okay. Yeah. So you see how many times we think, like, if I start in second category, there's no way. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That's not true. Right. It's not true. It makes it a little more challenging. And the reason it makes it more challenging is typically two things. Yes, dependent on where the man is on a scale of him being Madonna whore oriented, which make no mistake, every man is. It's just to the degree. And that is going to depend on many factors, culture, religion, age, and his brain, because it's a reptilian brain thing. Mm -hmm. So we don't know where a particular man falls. Okay. But you just outlined the fact that you can start in a way that is not controlling, trying to make things any way and giving him a mixed message. Is it the best? Not necessarily, but again, it's your attitude about it and the man feeling that you are in control of your own emotions and you are not trying to control him. But I'm not trying to control him. But I get what you're saying. I get it. I get it. I know that overtly you don't think I'm trying to control him, but the actions are not aligned with that. In other words, for the man, you're going home with him. What does that mean? Sex. Uh-huh. So especially that late at night, that it wasn't a real date and it was just, yeah, we're at the hookah lounge again, come by. He said it there before any of it really turned. He said it right then and there. I'd like you to go home with me. Do you think it changed from when you said, no, I'm not going to do that. And then you let him follow you home. And then you actually do. It never changed for him. He just kept pushing, pushing, pushing until you said yes. Oh, oh, I get it. I get it. Mm -hmm. I get it. Mm -hmm. I get it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what question do you have for me around him? Where do I go from now? Like, he's going to be here in about maybe two hours now. I don't have any expectations for the weekend, like I said, anymore. But in the unlikely event or likely event, he says, hey, I'm free tonight. Do you want to go somewhere? Or you know what? The graduation's over. I have a little bit of a time. If that situation presents itself, how do I navigate it? Well, there's a lot here you have to decide on. The most important thing you can do is to drop the train to control it. Okay. I mean completely. Now, you decide... In which way? Again, it's pretty black and white. On the one side of it, it is you go with him and you drop everything from the past and you do a version of what we just talked about, which is you go out, you make out with him, you do whatever. Now, make no mistake, you have to be totally aligned with whatever happens. I'm going to take 100% responsibility for it because already you know that he has not been showing you signs of wanting a relationship, especially a long-distance relationship, possibly. Yeah, and I don't get that at all. It, and it hasn't presented itself in any way, whether overtly or in a subtle manner. It hasn't, no. Right. So there's no reason to attempt to maneuver it into something like that with the concurrent actions that you've had. Okay. So it's 
Either you do or you don't. You go out with him. If you want to have sex with him, you have to, for the foreseeable future, be okay with that. And you see what he does. Just like in the scenario I outlined for you, if he keeps following up with you, calling and wanting to see you, you can do that. And then in short order, you say, you know, this has been really wonderful and fun. I've enjoyed all aspects of meeting you. But I, as a woman, know that if I continue down this road, I'm going to start to bond with you. And I do want a real relationship. So I think it's best that we make our goodbyes here. Got it. Okay. If he pushes for, well, no, you know, I'd like to see where it goes and I blah, 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 blah. Well, you have to ask questions about that to some degree. You say, really? You'd really be interested in having a long distance exclusive relationship? You see how I just snuck that in there? <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> you're really good. Yeah. 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 Because you're saying, that's what I'm looking for. If he says, yeah. Well, then you have to step into trust and you have to see if that's really what it is. And again, you make your decision and take 100% responsibility for that decision and try it. If you know, and again, we, we go under the Shakespearean, know thyself. Yes. So if that isn't something that, and for many women, that would never work. Mm -hmm. And they will belie their actions. They will be wanting something more and it's thinly veiled. It doesn't work. Mm. But if it's something that you can say, well, you know, I really like him. I'll throw the dice here. It's five hours. I mean, if it doesn't work out, okay. He's not showing me any signs of wanting a relationship right now, not overtly. So I'm going to take that highly into account and know that my odds are not great. But let me see. Each woman has her level of wanting to gamble in that way. Some people are more risk averse. Know thyself. Okay. And the other option is, let's say he says, hey, what are you doing tonight? Or, you know, the graduation's over. You want to come meet me at such and such and place? Any good spots in town you can recommend? And I say, what if I say no? Well, if you say it like that... <laughs> Don't expect, you see what I mean? It, don't expect anything. But if you say... Well, I meant, like, what if I say, you know what? I might have messed up early. I don't know. Like, I want to get out of the mixed category, period. I want to get out of it. I just want to get out of it. I don't know if I'm into deep. I'm attracted to this guy. Like, in my mind, I'm thinking that I will have sex with him at some point. But I want him to see me as, oh, she, she made me wait. But I've already messed that up. The other issue is that I'm like, what if I actually sleep with this guy and it gets back to my ex who Tony's friends with? How does that make me look? I'm just sleeping around with Tony's friends? Yeah, that's a big part of it. So that's part of my dilemma. Okay. So although Tony is not exactly best friends with my ex, I think they do communicate and on every off chance something that's transactional. Hey, can you do this for me? Can you go and look that up for me? And then he might slip in. Oh, by the way, did you know so-and-so is in town? Um, she's dating Leo now. And it seems like they, they're pretty serious. She sleeps at his place. What would my ex think of me? Not that it matters, but I think about that all the time. So Elaine, I'm going to ask you, because I know we talked a long time ago, but I remember your situation. Are we talking about that same ex that we talked about for a number of years? That concerns me for you. That one. And I, I mean, did the whole, I healed from everything with your help and everything. I did a no contact for about a year and everything. Um, we didn't speak for a long time. I sent the email. And then I think, yeah, in 2022, I finally unblocked him. I was like, you know what? I can just be cordial. And so every once in a while, he would message, hey, how are you? How's your mom? How's your dad? Where are you? Are you back in the U.S.? Are you back home? And I'm like, why? He's like, I'm going to come and see you. And I remember one time I said to him over the summer, I said, you know, you keep saying you want to see me. You've been saying this for the last four years. He's like, no, I am coming to see you. And I said, I said, what if you never see me again in this time ever and he said that's not going to happen because I am 
going to see you in this, 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 this lifetime. And a key point that I wanted to mention to you is, yes, we're broken up, but we had a great relationship. And I remember Tony saying to me that it's the same night after the introduction of his friend, with, with Lee, um, Leo was included, he said, you know he's coming back, right? I was like, what are you talking about? He said, I just want you to know, I, I'm, I, he told me he's coming back. I'm like, that, chap, that ship has sailed. So that's also part of my hesitation. I am deeply attracted to Leo. I love our conversation, like I said. I keep repeating myself. I love his humor. He's my type of guy. He's very similar, actually, to the other guy. They're born about four days apart, which kind of freaked me out. So maybe I have a type. And I'm like, that's my dilemma. That is my dilemma because of this middleman. That is it. If there was no middleman, I think I would have probably slept with him already and let the chips fall me their way and be okay with it. But it's the fact that the middleman, Tony, is there. So he has an advantage. He has Leo's, who is deeply his friend. Leo is his friend. Like, they're really buddies. They keep in touch every night. They, they, they go to each other's house. They go to the hookah lounge. But he's also lightly acquainted with my ex. So, Elaine, I'm going to give you my opinion on this, knowing the situation. And you I'm just, glad just... you remember, because I wasn't too sure if you did. Oh, yes. I remember anyone that I've had any real work with in the past. And I know we worked with each other a little bit. Yeah. And I do have quite the memory for that and I know the particulars there and when I say to you that you could be waiting to see that ex forever absolutely exactly exactly he's not going to come through for you it is a fantasy it's held you up emotionally emotionally yes yes took me a while it did mm -hmm. it sure did it did a number on me and the no contact was not until you allowed, which many times this happens, it's that, well, I can see it's not gonna be what I want, but I don't want to be mean and I don't want it to be adversarial because it's not adversarial. So I'll just accept the hellos and the this and the that. I know what's going on in his life to a great degree this is not a good tree for you to bark up at all which tree with leo or your ex oh got you okay okay that ship has sailed but he enjoys knowing that there's still interest on your part okay thank you for being brutally honest brutally right i understand yes but that's what i do because when I know someone can take it, which I know you can, and you need to hear that now, because if that is holding you up from any other real possibility, I would hate to see that for you. Do I think that Leo is? I don't know at all. He's not showing any signs that he is. Mm -hmm. And he may be going under guy code, which is if a woman has been with a guy in my circle, oh yeah, I'll share her and have sex with her, but I'm never going to take her out of the circle, so to speak, if you catch my drift. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, I, I, I get your drift. Yeah, I, I get it completely. And um, Leo, not that it makes a difference, but Leo, when I look at the timeline of us all going to school together, university, we were all at university at the same time, with just probably a year or two in terms of who graduated. The reason why I am saying this is because although my ex, the guy whose name begins with an F, is outside of the country, there could be a possibility that maybe he's acquainted with who Leo is, although he might not know who Leo is. Does that make sense? Yeah, but it's more, and again, not about... F, I know who he is, mm -hmm. it's not about him. We don't care about him because he is spoken for on so many levels. Okay, okay. You get my drift on that, correct? I do, yes, I All do. All right. Mm -hmm. So many levels spoken for mm -hmm. that it's more how Leo would feel about it. And if this is three steps removed, it may make no difference whatsoever. If F is just somebody that he knows of... That's not the same as being in his guy circle. 
where you don't do that to a guy you know, you see? Mm -hmm. And you cannot predicate any of your action on what F will feel or not feel about it because there's nothing that he has given you and can give you. You had a nice liaison when he was here in this country. There's nothing indicating that anything is in his mind about making things different, permanent. I am relieved to hear you say that. I am extremely relieved to hear that because I'm, I've healed. The crying has stopped. The anger is gone. The resentment is gone. You know our story. Mm -hmm. The healing has stopped. But there's a part of me, I'm like, what if he is really serious? What if he does get that visa and come and see me and we start over? There's that hope. There's that slight hope. But I'm like, you know what? It's been four years. I've dated since him. I've had two relationships since him. They didn't work out. Now, I don't know anything about Leo, where it's headed. How would he feel? But I'm glad to hear you say it doesn't really matter because he really isn't in the picture and he hasn't shown any forward movement of being, I'm going to lock this down. So thank you. Thank you so much. I needed to hear that. I'm really glad to hear that. And yes, if you can totally understand that he gets something from the intermittent now and again reaching out to you for the maybe, he gets a lot from that. And it's extremely detrimental to you as a woman. Like even now? Wow. Okay. So maybe I should stop. Is that what I'm hearing? We had one time he said, I missed the love we made. Oh my God. Elaine. I, I'm shocked to hear you say this because I remember so distinctly saying the same exact thing to you years ago. Years ago. You're taking the flirting, all of that, to mean something. Of course he misses it. Of course he loves looking at your pretty pictures. Of course he wants to have sex with you again. Of course he fantasizes. And he doesn't have the whatever is needed in a man to stop himself from doing that because it's wrong to do that to you. Oh, oh, wow. This thing goes so deep. Okay. Yes. Wow. Good men don't do that to women. They don't. When they know, uh, and, and this all comes back to, and I know you'll get this, the puppy principle. When you meet that wonderful little puppy that you would love to love on, and you know you can't adopt it, you want to, in that moment, you so like you fantasize about it, and oh, I'll take it home, and then you realize, oh, well, wait a minute, this isn't the little toy poodle that I need in my tiny one bedroom apartment. This is a, gonna be a big Great Dane that I can't take care of. I do the right thing, no matter how much I love it in that moment. It could be even my favorite breed, which I'll even tell you, Great Danes are one of my favorite breeds. Would I have one? I wouldn't do that to it. Not right. So you don't, you let it get adopted by someone who it's right for. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You just, this just, this just blew my mind. It really blew my mind. So he really gets off of it. He gets off of that. Yes, and I don't want you to make him a demon. No, 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 no. Yeah. I'm past that stage, yeah. But he's just... A man. Well, yes and no. Because I know about him, I'm going to give you this and you'll understand. There's a component here of culture coming into play. I want you to think about your stereotypical red-blooded American man from the Bible Belt of the U.S. Mm -hmm. You know, goes to church every Sunday and you know, drives his truck and has a great job and has standard, like, American values. Mm -hmm. He would not be doing what F is doing. Mm. Hmm. Okay. Because the tenant of that man is you do 
what is right for women and children, no matter what, you do right by them. And if that's not what you want, and it doesn't feel good to you to do it, you suck it up and do it anyway. Wow. Wow. Okay. Now, now I'm not making that the standard of all men. It's just a cultural thing. Mm-hmm. And from the part of the world where F comes from, it is different. There is a greater degree of sharing females and females sharing men. Yes, I know. It exists there. Uh-huh. <laughs> it does. Yeah. yeah. I know what, it exists yeah. in that culture. It's very strong. Right. And so he doesn't, this is why I'm not demonizing him, because he doesn't see anything wrong with it. Right. Okay. I got it. Yeah. I got it. But it's extremely detrimental to you. Okay, okay. Because you you love him, you're female, and it's keeping you from moving on, and you're not in that culture. Mm-hmm, 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 okay. So, this is why I don't want you to think about that in any way, shape, or form. And if you want to simply, because you don't, want the toughness of saying, you know, I never ever want to hear from you again, because it's not that. It's that not that at all. No. Right, right. No. I get that. Mm-hmm. I get that. But it still has to be when he starts with the flirting or anything, you know, that's not for me. I have to tell you that that's not of interest for me. That ship has sailed for us. You know, I want the best for you. He will eventually stop if you do not keep accepting those reach outs. Okay, got you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can do that because he probably will message me. He'll probably message me on a Christmas day. It's very light surface stuff, really, really light surface things. I want to, you know, his first language is Spanish. And every once in a while, if I can't get my friend here, I was like, hey, what does this mean real quick? Or how do I say this? And he'll respond right away. That's it. Mm. Like, I'm trying to, I'm trying not to get too into it. But he, he hasn't done anything wrong. It just, it just ended. The relationship ended. You know, he had to go back, whatever, whatever, work for his company. But I hear what you're saying. Emotionally, mm-hmm. emotionally, it's not good. And so, Paula, thank you. You are a godsend. So I can definitely, um, when he starts that flirtatious stuff, I can say that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And you'd be... It- well advised. Now, as far as Leo goes, mm-hmm. let's talk about exactly what you do from here because he'll be there in a few hours. If he's not already, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's totally up to you in terms of you saying, what do I want today, tonight? What will I potentially want? But mostly, what am I willing to take responsibility for? Wondering what I'm going to tell Elaine about what she needs to be willing to do to get on the right track with Leo? In the rest of this episode, I outline for Elaine additional things she needs to consider and what she needs to be willing to do in order to make a decision about the direction she wants things to go with Leo. And because I want you to get the results you desire in your romantic life, I invite you to check out the 8020 Wonder Club where you can hear the rest of this coaching conversation with Elaine and more of what she needs to consider about taking a gamble on Leo. The 8020 Wonder Club is an exclusive membership-only club of the Make You Wonder podcast, where you'll get nearly 200 ad-free episodes categorized by age and relationship status, plus all new episodes the moment they're formatted and ready to be aired. Unfiltered coaching conversations like this one with all my advice and principles to have you succeeding in your romantic life. Discover what the club has to offer in addition to the Make and Wonder episodes as well. The 8020 Wonder Club now includes my Making Magic with Men Mindset Manual, specific mindset and mechanics of men videos for you to focus on each and every week. It alone is valued at over $500 and is all yours as a member. Join monthly and cancel at any time or save by committing to a six or 12 month membership. And not only will you save by committing to more, you'll receive a full coaching intensive experience where you'll be talking to me in a conversation like you just heard. You choose the date anytime during your 12 month membership and I'll be answering all your questions on getting what you desire and deserve in your romantic life. Check it out at the 8020wonder.club and join us. 
as that is the only way you'll be able to hear the rest of this episode with Elaine. Don't miss out on how to make your man wonder in the right way to have the results you want in your relationship or how to start dating in a way that guides a potential Mr. Right to do right by you. Go now to the 8020wonder.club. That's T-H-E-8020 W-O-N-D-E-R dot C-L-U-B. You and your love will be glad you did.